Hey, this is Stacy with Gooseberry Ridge Farm and we are in the garden. I am uh, trying to do a little tomato pruning and uh, prep for next week's super, super hot everything. I don't know, we're gonna be living in an oven it looks like, which is not quite normal for us. Uh, it's also been really hot and dry here so I've let my pruning kind of um, go a little bit because when it's dry, you don't need as much airflow for your tomatoes. <clears throat> you don't need as much airflow for the tomatoes, plus the brains, plus the shade on the fruit helps it to not sunburn. Let me show you. Okay, so you can see my uh, kale and clay on the leaves, that's the white stuff. That is supposed to help with um, reducing the heat stress um, and the temperature, and I've kind of like not been tucking in the branches like I should be because we haven't had, with no rain, we basically had no wind. Um, so everything just stays here, but we have some slight possibility of severe storms tonight, um, this evening. So I am going along and tucking branches in. Most of these aren't that bad, but like this one, see how it sticks all the way out and never got tucked into the cattle panel. That one in wind um, would likely break off or at least fall down and I don't know, it'll be. So I either need to find it a place to tuck in or tie it if I want to keep it. Um, if I had been keeping up with my pruning, I would not have that many extra branches. But at this point, we're looking at continued dry weather. Even though it might rain tonight, it's not gonna be a lot. And hopefully the tomatoes won't mind too much as far as, you know, being wet goes. Um, see, we have a lot of fruit on the plants. Um, we've also been picking a lot. I'll show you my basket in a minute. Uh, I've been picking um, a large amount of tomatoes very suddenly too. It was when I sprayed the kale and clay. It uh, It's supposed to lower the temperature for the plants by um, 10 to 15 degrees. Um, and that, oh, this, is, this guy's kind of funny. Oops, got stuck between the cattle panel. Anyway, it's supposed to lower the temperature so that the um, plants are less stressed by the heat and um, less likely to get sunburned. Now I've got all these fruits that have grown since I sprayed. That I, that's why I need to get more on them. They should look more like this guy with their sunscreen. Uh, and this is especially important for the darker tomato varieties and ones that have less leaves over them. Like there's some shade leaves over most of these. Okay, but if you go on this row, this is my, um, these are my black beauties. They tend to be kind of more spread out plants. They're less bushy and the tomatoes are black. So they, um, at least on top, these are some of the later ones. They're a little lighter, but they still, uh, you know, they get hotter. So I need to spray those. It's kind of fun how you can see the how these are all new since I sprayed it was only like maybe a week and a half ago there's some more down here um, but they all need a new coat of sunscreen there's my basket that's uh, one thing that's kind of sad about the kaolin clay is it makes your tomatoes all ugly until you wash them but this is a black beauty. I actually almost missed this one because between the clay and the leaves on the plant, I couldn't see that it was turning red. I've talked about this before, but I pick my tomatoes normally while they're blushing and these are actually like pretty close to ripe. Um, see this one is more blushing and this is a yellow variety, so it doesn't look very ripe, but it is. I am out here twice a day and somehow managed to miss this giant cucumber. And I was going to show you on the peppers what the sunburn looks like. This one. I mean, it looks a little bit different on tomatoes, but this is where a pepper plant fell over and suddenly its peppers were exposed to the sun. Um, it just 
it's not good. We can cut that off and use the rest of this. We're gonna make some salsa today, but that one has it too. Um, so I'm gonna be picking a few more peppers before this heat wave next week. I'll show you a screenshot of our current um, forecasted temperatures. This is not normal for us at all. We should not be over 100 for a week at a time. We're, we're not in Texas. Anyway, so most of my squash has died from vine borers and uh, there's some pretty bad squash bugs in there too, but they don't, they're not the cause of this. Um, I've started new squash for fall this year. I normally don't do that, but everybody doesn't say it works. So here I am trying it. I'm also showing you a teddy bear sunflower because it's adorable. We're out in the yard with the yard tomatoes now. This is where my garlic was. It's all sunflowers now. And uh, anyway, these were supposed to all be San Marzanos. And this is what a San Marzano plant should look like. And again, with the clay, um, all these fruits are new, so that's really cool. I think reducing the heat stress on the plant by spraying them helped them to set a lot more new fruit because normally I would not be seeing fruit set when it's near 100 degrees. Um, it just doesn't happen. So I'm excited about that. These plants are loaded. Look at this, but, but as you may have noticed, if you've ever grown San Marzanos, this is another one that looks like a San Marzano. They kind of look like a Roma, but they're an indeterminate variety, so they kind of go crazy. Um, this is not a San Marzano. I'm not sure what this is. It came from a San Marzano seed packet from Baker Creek. They have promised me an explanation. This one also came from them. I mean, they've, they've admitted that it's clearly not a San Marzano, um, but we got these small round fruits from this seed packet. They all ripen to red. These pear-shaped ones, which these are smaller. And then this plant is creating giant ones. They're actually very good, um, but they're definitely not a San Marzano. I think they seem to be crossed with something, probably a slicer. I'm not sure about these tiny ones. It's kind of disappointing because I really like to make um, all my sauce with San Marzano's. I mean, I also make other sauce, but I, you know, use the big slicers and stuff and make salsa and tomato soup, but make sauce from the San Marzano's and it, it makes this beautiful bright red sauce. It's better than like, I don't know, most of the slicers I grow are funky colors like Cherokee purples and black beauties and whatnot. So and pink tomatoes. None of those make as red of a sauce as a San Marzano. But these are not San Marzanos, so better luck next year, I guess. Okay, I'm gonna show you just a few more things in the garden and then I'm going to actually post this video because I have been taking garden update videos and greenhouse update videos since March and not posting them. I will eventually probably finally do that, but not yet. Okay, this is where our onions were, which if I had posted those other videos, you would have seen them. Our onions are now about done curing in the sun porch, but these are now um, bush beans, round three. Um, I'm going to plant a fourth succession because with this heat, we're having a horrible time with bush beans. We got about a quarter of our normal harvest from our normal bush beans. Um, we're walking by the peppers. I will show you more peppers here in a minute. This is something else. I'm trying to get back to the other bush beans to show you. Um, they are back here. These are all bush beans. They're kind of turning yellow. They're very sad. They've, they bloomed. They made hardly any beans because it was so hot. And now they are kind of trying to die. At least this, this variety is. It's dragon tongue beans. This row is mixed. Some of them are still producing a little bit in the heat, but not really. So what my plan is, especially since the dragon tongues usually continue to produce a little bit here and there, um, but they've just completely quit and the beans they are producing are really odd shapes and that's probably from not pollinating properly from the heat. So I'm gonna take this row out if I can find some seed because I'm kind of out right now and wasn't planning to plant 
another two or three hundred bush beans, but here we are. We still have time before our first frost because most bush beans take 50 to 60 days to mature, and we're only in mid-July. So September, when they mature, we should be well before our first frost and cooler. Um, hopefully not too cool, but hopefully raining. So there's lots of hopefully's there, but we're going to you know, take this row out. I want to get some like high producing hybrid variety and hopefully get enough beans for the winter because we do not have enough right now. And this is my, my miniature second succession, which I'm glad I only planted a few. I have a few here and a few in my raised bed over there. Um, these are blooming now, so they aren't going to make anything. It's going to be awful because this next week it's supposed to be well over 100 and they don't really produce well if it's over 90 so that's kind of a lost cause this is all my kale i've kind of slacked on spraying bt caterpillar killer so you can see what has happened to it um that's broccoli and brussels sprouts brussels sprouts never did anything i'm kind of holding on to some hope that they might um perk up for fall if these all die, I will plant new ones in the fall, but otherwise I'll just cut it back and have the kale will kind of grow back for fall. Over here we have all the vining things. Winter squash, like this um, Long Island cheese pumpkin thing. There's some butternut squash in there. They're doing really well. Their pest resistance is lovely as always and we've got these um guys this is like zucchino rampancante i believe is the name of that that's it's a zucchini um alternative that i've grown the last few years there's one way up there that i can't reach to if you let them go they turn into like a big long neck butternut squash that's really good um difficult to store because they're really funky shapes but good and uh if you eat them at this size they taste pretty much like zucchini which is nice um, because they are still producing while my zucchinis over there have died. And the bugs over here just really aren't bad at all. So I told you I started some more zucchinis. I'm going to show you those and talk about that a little bit. Okay, I lied. I'm going back to the peppers. Um, I just noticed this guy here sticking out. And I'm going to pick him because... Um, this part has been in the sun, and it doesn't look like it's sunburned yet, but it will be this week. I'm going to give this one, because I've noticed this big pepper here growing every day. I'm going to give it a little longer because it has some shade, but uh, I'm going to keep a close eye on that one. Any of these that are in the sun this week, if the plant, like this plant, starting to lean, I should have cages on all of them, but I don't. Um, they will toast and burn. Alright, we're over here in the greenhouse um, right next to the greenhouse we actually are using the greenhouse to shade these seedlings in the afternoon um, so this is my next round of zucchini and a couple cucumbers they're looking really good I'm excited to see that the bugs haven't found them over here I'm also starting some lettuce which is not going well because it's so hot there's one um, these are sunflowers. We're doing lots of succession planting with sunflowers this year for our you pick flower farm. Here is the next round of zucchini. Glad I checked on them because some of them are trying to commit suicide. Like this little guy is sticking its roots out first. Usually if I catch them real quick, turn them over, they still grow. This one's doing it too. What on earth? It's like we put the seeds in upside down, but that's not a thing. Um, this one is trying to show us its roots too. It's just too hot for that sort of thing. Um, got some lavender and lemongrass and teddy bear sunflowers in pots. We were trying to sell those, but turns out it's so hot. You know, we're not getting the crowds we normally do for our um, farm in summer. And those aren't blooming yet, so hopefully they will bloom and we will have them four people. Anyway, we've been succession planting, so this is where my chamomile was, and now it's uh, zinnias, and this is, you know, flowers. This is another video. Uh, I am checking out here because I had some blister beetles show up. They seem to show up here uh, when it is super hot and dry. We've had them three out of the six seasons we've been here. 
they were on this plant. This is their poop here. And my lovely uh, to uh, fingernail there. Um, but I was spraying for, for uh, tarnished plant bugs the other night and with an organic approved spray that I spray in the dark because then it doesn't get the bees. Um, and I didn't see them, but then when I came back in the morning, I saw one on my greenhouse and I looked and I found the damage right here and they are gone. And I assume they're gone because I sprayed them without knowing it. Um, calendula is kind of a bug magnet, so lots of people use it for a trap crop. I'm clearly trying to grow it for the flowers. Oh, a little blurry. Um, there's some more damage right here. Hopefully that's not all blurry. Um, there's some more of their poop right here. They really don't like water, so it rained a little bit last night. That could be why they're hiding. Um, who knows? This is all basil. I have this basil irrigated, but I don't cut the leaves off, but it is looking much better than the basil in my garden because of the irrigation. Um, I'm probably going to cut some more of this and make some more herb salts. I'm going to show you the sunflowers and then we're going to call it a video. That's the thing. Here they are. Of course, the sunflowers. We had this first six, two successions that were kind of all over the place and um, all this left is the little ones, but these will all get pulled out and we're going to put new and then the next round looks like this. So pretty. And then we have some way right back here. These are pro-cut plums. Um, plum sunflowers. They're so cute. And there's so many. And we're open um, the next couple days. And then we have to close for most of the week because of the heat. And I'm going to have to, I'm just going to have to keep all these for myself. Okay, hope you enjoyed my garden update. Hope your gardens are doing well, and I will see you soon, hopefully.